Podcast. This episode is Chapter 6, Part 4, Pathologies and Procedures. Part 1, Lymphatic Pathologies and Procedures. There's only a handful of pathologies and procedures related to the lymphatic system in the chapter, but they do tend to be terms that are confused, so I'm going to go over them with you. The first term is lymphadenopathy, L-Y-M-P-H-A-D-E-N-O-P-A-T-H-Y. If you parse it down, you'll see that we have lympho, adeno, and pathy. Lymphadeno refers to the lymph nodes, and pathy refers to any disease or disorder. So lymphadenopathy is a general term for any disease or disorder affecting a lymph node or nodes. Now a more specific term is lymphadenitis, L-Y-M-P-H-A-D-E-N-I-T-I-S. And if we parse that down, we've got lymph, adeno, and itis. And using our knowledge of word parts, what would this term mean? Well, I hope you got inflammation of lymph nodes. Now, the tricky thing about this term is it literally means inflammation of the lymph nodes. Sometimes it's commonly referred to as swollen glands. But that common meaning of swollen glands makes lymphadenitis easy to confuse with another term, lymphedema, L-Y-M-P-H-E-D-E-M-A. Notice, first of all, lymphedema does not have that word part adeno in it, referring to gland. Lymphedema literally would parse as swelling of lymph. Okay, it doesn't really relate to the lymph glands. Lymphedema is any swelling anywhere in the body due to an excessive accumulation of lymph. So that's actually quite a different concept than swollen glands, although we tend to think swelling, that's edema. So a lot of times people will see lymphedema and think, oh, that's swollen glands, but that's not the case, okay? If you are asked about a term for swollen glands, the technical term is lymphadenitis. Inflammation of the lymph nodes is the swelling of the glands. Lymphedema is just a swelling of a body part somewhere because lymph is accumulating. Okay, and then they give us the term lymphoma, L-Y-M-P-H-O-M-A. Lymphoma is a term for any cancer of the lymphatic system. And lymphoma breaks into two types. First of all, there's Hodgkin's lymphoma, H-O-D-G-K-I-N, apostrophe S, Hodgkin's lymphoma. And this is characterized by the presence of large cancerous lymphocytes, which are called Reed Steinberg cells. If we have the Reed Steinberg cells present, we have Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now we also have the term non Hodgkin's lymphoma, N O N, non hyphen Hodgkin's, H O D G K I N, apostrophe S. And that refers to all other types of lymphomas. So if it's Hodgkin's, it has the Reed Steinberg cells. If it doesn't have the Reed Steinberg cells, it's non Hodgkin's. It's everything else. Okay, and finally, they throw one procedure at us for the lymphatic system. And that's a little tricky to spell. Uh, it doesn't parse into word parts that we're familiar with, so we do have to be careful of it. It's lymphocentigraphy. L-Y-M-P-H-O-S-C-I-N-T-I-G-R-A-P-H-Y, lymphocentigraphy. And this is a diagnostic test of the lymphatic vessels. Okay, well, let's do a little bit of practice over these terms. What is the term for the inflammation of the lymph nodes? That's lymphadenitis, L-Y-M-P-H-A-D-E-N-I-T-I-S. And what is the common name for lymphadenitis? Well, 
Well, that's the swollen glands. What is the term for any cancer of the lymphatic system? That's lymphoma, L-Y-M-P-H-O-M-A. What is the term for a diagnostic test of the lymph vessels? That's lymphocentigraphy, L-Y-M-P-H-O-S-C-I-N-T-I-G-R-A-P-H-Y. What is the term for any disease or disorder affecting the lymph nodes? That's lymphadenopathy, L-Y-M-P-H-A-D-E-N-O-P-A-T-H-Y. And what is the term for lymphatic cancers that do not present Reed Steinberg cells. That's non Hodgkin's lymphoma, N O N hyphen H O D G K I N apostrophe S lymphoma, L Y M P H O M A. Okay, well that covers pathologies and procedures related to the lymphatic system. Now we have pathologies and procedures related to the immune system, and there are quite a bit more here. And again, some of these tend to be a little tricky. So first of all, we're going to go on part two here with the immune pathologies. First of all, we have a term that most of us have heard. It's allergy. A-L-L-E-R-G-Y. It's a little bit slippery to define. Allergy is a hypersensitivity to some substance such that it causes an allergic reaction. Now that's a little bit of a circular definition because it's not defining allergic reaction, but we'll get to that. An allergy itself is just a hypersensitivity to something such that if you run into it, you're going to have an allergic reaction. What is an allergic reaction? Well, an allergic reaction is a situation in which the immune system overreacts to a harmless substance as if it were some type of dangerous invader. It's an overreaction of the immune system. And these can be mild. We, you know, a lot of us have these. We get the sniffles, get a congested nose, that sort of thing. Some of us have allergic allergies to something we might break out in a rash, that sort of thing. We also can have extremely severe allergic reactions, and there's a special term for that, a serious life-threatening reaction that would involve drops in blood pressure, closing off of the airways so you can't breathe, maybe you're breaking out in the hives all over your skin. Uh, this would be called a systemic reaction. S-Y-S-T-E-M-I-C reaction. It's also known as anaphylaxis. A-N-A-P-H-Y-L-A-X-I-S. And a third variation on the term is we could say it's anaphylactic shock. A-N-A-P-H-Y-L-A-C-T-I-C and then shock. S-H-O-C-K. Shock by itself wouldn't do it. That's something else. But anaphylactic shock, that would be okay. Anaphylaxis or a systemic reaction. A serious life-threatening type of allergic reaction. Okay, well that covers allergies. That's one thing that can go wrong with the immune system. The immune system can just overreact to something that is not harmful at all. This would be something in the environment. The second type of immune pathology is the autoimmune disorder, A-U-T-O-I-M-M-U-N-E. And this is a condition in which the immune system will react to its own tissues, 
it's the immune system starts producing antibodies against the, the body itself. And in our textbook, there's a table, 6.2, that shows us a variety of examples. There are quite a few autoimmune disorders out there. And so you need to go ahead and be sure to study those. I'm not going to go over those with you. They're right there in the table. They're pretty straightforward. But they're all diseases in which the body is attacking itself. So we have a hypersensitivity, that's an allergy, to something in the environment. We have the autoimmune disorder where the immune system is attacking its own body. And then we have the immunodeficiency disorder. I-M-M-U-N-O, immunodeficiency, D-E-F-I-C-I-E-N-C-Y, and then disorder, D-I-S-O-R-D-E-R. -E immunodeficiency disorder is a condition in which the immune system is compromised. What does compromise mean? Compromise means that it is weakened, absent, or otherwise not functioning properly. The immune system is not up to the job. It's deficient. And this can be quite serious because it can leave one open to a variety of attacks from outside the body if the immune system is not up to defending the body. There is one type of pathogen out there which you've probably all heard of, which is actually able to attack the immune system itself. And that is the human immunodeficiency virus, known as HIV for short. The human immunodeficiency virus is a blood-borne infection in which the virus itself can damage or kill the cells of the immune system. And the textbook goes into all of the different types of diseases and disorders that one can get when one has HIV. Most of them are things that one would never normally get because the immune system would just protect you from it. But without the good immune system, it leaves you open to all kinds of things. Okay, well let's go ahead and practice on these, the immune pathologies. What is the term for a situation in which the immune system overreacts to a harmless substance as if it were a dangerous invader. Well, that's an allergic reaction. A-L-L-E-R-G-I-C reaction. R-E-A-C-T-I-O-N. What is the term for a dangerous, life-threatening allergic reaction? We've got several options here. We could say anaphylaxis, A-N-A-P-H-Y-L-A-X-I-S. We could say anaphylactic shock, A -N -A -P -H -Y. Y L A C T I C shock, or we could say systemic reaction, S Y S T E M I C reaction, R E A C T I O N. What is the term for a condition in which the immune system produces antibodies against its own tissues? Well, that's an autoimmune disorder, A-U-T-O-I-M-M-U-N-E, disorder, D-I-S-O-R-D-E-R. -E what is the term for an autoimmune disorder that affects the brain and spinal cord? Well, that's off that chart you need to study, and the answer to that is multiple sclerosis. And finally, what is the term for a pathogen that damages or kills the cells of the immune system? That's the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. Human, H-U-M-A-N, Immunodeficiency, I-M-M-U-N-O, 
D-E-F-I-C-I-E-N-C-Y, virus, V-I-R-U-S. Okay, those are the pathologies of the immune system. Now, part three, let's look at the procedures relating to the immune system. And I find that often the terminology here, the terms can seem so similar that they're often confused. So let's try to sort those out here. First of all, I'm going to give you the most general term. The most general term for an immune procedure is immunotherapy. I-M-M-U-N-O-T-H-E-R-A-P-Y. It is a general term for treatments of the immune system, and these treatments usually are designed to either stimulate or repress the immune system. Okay, so that's the most general term. If we're doing something to the immune system, we're doing immunotherapy. And that is designed to either stimulate or help the immune system do better or repress or slow down the immune system if it's overreacting to something. Now, let's first look at the ones that are designed to help or stimulate the immune system. And the textbook gives us a class of therapy known as antibody therapy. A-N-T-I-B-O-D-Y therapy. T-H-E-R-A-P-Y. Antibody therapy is designed to stimulate the immune system's response. And the basic gist behind this is you're going to give the body some antibodies that are going to help it out. If it doesn't have enough antibodies of its own, we're going to give it some. And the first way we do that is through synthetic immunoglobulin. S-Y-N-T-H-E-T-I-C I-M-M-U-N-O-G-L-O-B-U-L-I-N, synthetic immunoglobulin. Also, it's known as immune serum, I-M-M-U-N-E, serum, S-E-R-U-M. Now, this is an administration of antibodies post-exposure to prevent an infection from occurring, and we did talk this about this before when we were talking about the types of adaptive immunity. Do you remember what kind of immunity is being provided to someone if we're giving them post-exposure antibodies? Well, that would provide artificial passive immunity. If you got that gold star, all right. Artificial passive immunity. We're putting antibodies into the body medically, so it's artificial, and it's passive because the body is not making its own antibodies. These are just a temporary assistance. Well, another way we can do this is through the use of something called monoclonal antibodies. M-O-N-O-C-L-O-N-A-L. Monoclonal and then antibodies. These are antibodies that are produced by a clone cell, and they're used to boost the immune response to certain malignancies. So we'd have a cell that could put out antibodies, but we want more antibodies, so we're going to clone the cell, get a lot more cells, they're going to crank out a lot more antibodies, and then we'll inject those antibodies into the patient. And then finally, there's synthetic interferon. S-Y-N-T-H-E-T-I-C-I-N-T-E-R-F-E-R-O-N. And remember, interferon is something the body actually makes itself. Remember, the T cells make interferon. Well, we can create it artificially and then give it to a body in order to increase the amount of interferon, and so it would increase the effectiveness. Okay, so that's examples of antibody therapy. We're trying to boost or stimulate the immune system response. Now, the other type of immunotherapy is the type where we're going to repress or slow down the immune response, and this is called immunosuppression. I-M-M-U-N-O-S-U-P-P-R-E-S-S-I-O-N. This is designed to repress, to slow down, the immune system's response. 
and there are several ways this is done. First of all, there is a general term for a drug that can cause immunosuppression, and that is immunosuppressant. I-M-M-U-N-O-S-U-P-P-R-E-S-S-A-N-T, suppressant. This is a substance that reduces normal immune response. In other words, an immunosuppressant causes immunosuppression. So that's where you got to be really careful about the terms. If we're talking about the treatment itself, we're talking about immunosuppression. That's when we're trying to reduce or repress the immune system's response. We use a drug or a, a compound called an immunosuppressant, A-N-T, in order to cause that to happen. So you want to be really, really careful about that. And going back further, you do not want to confuse immunosuppressant and immunosuppression with immunotherapy. Because remember, immunotherapy could be one of two things, right? What are the two things that immunotherapy can do? Well, it can suppress, but it also can stimulate the immune system. So we don't want to confuse the very general term immunotherapy with these other terms, okay? One form of immunotherapy is to repress, which is immunosuppressant, and we can do that by giving an immunosuppressant, which is a substance that reduces immune response. Now, the textbook goes on to give us a couple of examples of immunosuppressants. First of all is a corticosteroid drug, C-O-R-T-I-C-O-S-T-E-R-O-I-D, corticosteroid. This is a hormone-like drug that can be used as an anti-inflammatory. It will fight inflammation, and it also immunosuppresses. It acts as an immunosuppressant, okay? And don't confuse the corticosteroid with, like, you know, steroids that athletes use. Those are anabolic steroids, like um, synthetic testosterone or something like that. This isn't really the same thing here. A corticosteroid is something like a cortisone. Like if you have an injured shoulder or something, you might be given a cortisone shot to reduce the inflammation and to help it heal. Okay? It would have an anti-inflammatory action. Corticosteroids can also be given as immunosuppressants to help relieve some of those autoimmune disorders where the body is going nuts and there's too much of an immune reaction and it's attacking itself. So a corticosteroid is an example of an immunosuppressant. Another type of drug they talk about in the textbook is a cytotoxic drug, C-Y-T-O-T-O-X-I-C, cytotoxic. That is a medication that kills or damages cells. And we most often think of that as used as chemotherapy, which is used to fight cancer cells. Uh, otherwise known as an anti-neoplastic, A-N-T-I-N-E-O-P-L-A-S-T-I-C, something designed to kill the neoplasms or the, the newly formed cancer cells. But it also can be used as an immunosuppressant. It can reduce the activity of the immune system. Okay, so that's immunosuppressant. We're going to depress or repress the immune system we're going to use immunosuppressant drugs, and we have two examples of those, the corticosteroid and the cytotoxic drug. Okay, and finally, part four, we've got some medical specialties related to the immune system. First of all, we have the allergist, A-L-L-E-R-G-I-S-T. An allergist is a specialist in altered immune reactivity. Now that's an important point. Remember, an allergy is when the immune system overreacts. It reacts to something it shouldn't react to. It reacts to something that's really harmless. 
So a specialist in altered immune reactivity is an allergist. That's different than an immunologist, I-M-M-U-N-O-L-O-G-I-S-T. An immunologist is a specialist in diagnosing and treating diseases and disorders of the immune system. That would be things like immunodeficiency, perhaps autoimmune disorders, variety of things that can go wrong. But we generally don't associate an immunologist with an allergist. Someone could do both specialties. There are doctors that would do both specialties, but they're considered separate things. The next specialist is a rheumatologist, R-H-E-U-M-A-T-O-L-O-G-I-S-T. A rheumatologist is a specialist in autoimmune disorders affecting the joints and the connective tissues. And you may remember back uh, from chapter 3 when we talked about the skeleton, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. It's when the immune system is attacking the joints. And so a rheumatologist is someone who would treat someone with that. And finally, we have an oncologist, O-N-C-O-L-O-G-I-S-T. An oncologist is a specialist in treating cancer. Okay, and let's do some practice over these last group of terms. What is the term for a substance that is administered after a patient has been exposed to a pathogen in order to prevent an infection from occurring? Well, that's a synthetic immunoglobulin, S-Y-N-T-H-E-T-I-C-I-M-M-U-N-O-G-L-O B-U-L-I-N, or we could say immune serum, I-M-M-U-N-E-S-E-R-U-M. What is the general term for treatments that are designed to stimulate or repress the immune system? That's immunotherapy, I-M-M-U-N-O-T-H-E-R-A-P-Y. What is the term for a substance that reduces the immune system's response? That's an immunosuppressant. I-M-M-U-N-O-S-U-P-P-R-E-S-S-A-N-T. What is the term for a substance that kills or damages cells? That's a cytotoxic drug, C-Y-T-O-T-O-X-I-C. What is the term for a hormone-like drug that is used as an immunosuppressant? That's a corticosteroid drug, C-O-R-T-I-C-O-S-T-E-R-O-I-D. What is the term for a specialist in altered immune reactivity? Well, that is an allergist, A-L-L-E-R-G-I-S-T. And what is a specialist in autoimmune disorders of the joints and connective tissues? That's a rheumatologist, R-H-E-U-M-A-T. O-L-O-G-I-S-T. And what is the term for the type of treatment that is used to stimulate 
the immune system response. Well, that's antibody therapy. A-N-T-I-B-O-D-Y. Okay, well, that covers it for the pathologies and procedures related to both the lymphatic system and the immune system. We've only got a few things left here. We've got the pathogens, which are listed in the textbook, and also we've got the short section on oncology. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast. <music>